Hey guys, welcome back to Feed the Wolf podcast. Today I am joined by my boyfriend, Robert Johnson. What up? <laughs> um, and I'm sure he'll be on this podcast more than once, but the reason he's on here today is not only because I love him, but that he's actually helped me a lot in my own self-growth. And one thing that I believe he's really good at is being able to see other people's perspectives which is kind of what we're going to be talking about today, not only perspective, but also judgment and how that can kind of cause us to lead a life that may not be the best for us. But so before we get into it, before we dive deep into all the good nuggets, um, we're just going to talk a little bit about Robert. So I met Robert at the CrossFit gym, typical CrossFit love story. <laughs> um, but just so you guys can get a little bit of a background on him before we go too deep, um, how did you find CrossFit? So, thank you, Miranda. Thanks for having me. Um, just straight out the gate, how I found CrossFit. Yeah. Okay, so I was playing collegiate football at Whitewater. UW, dub, dub, dub. I was, uh, I tore my meniscus. So I was kind of coming back from like a rehab standpoint, like trying to figure out what I would do next. If I really was enjoying football as much as I thought I was if I really wanted to sacrifice as much as I did for the sport. And my brother, my brother Justin, actually was opening up a gym down in Crystal Lake, Illinois. So is it close enough? Mm-hmm. Okay, down in Crystal Lake, Illinois. And he requested that I come down and work out with him. He'd be like, hey, why don't you use CrossFit to rehab your knee? And I was like, bro, great idea. So I ended up going down there, and I would drive down there every single day after work and work out some sort of way with him. And I just, I fell in love. I said, forget football. This is my new thing. I want a fitness all day and all night. So, okay. I think CrossFit is a good way to, if you're coming from other sports, it's kind of like a good way to stay competitive. Definitely. But, um, so then how did you find yourself getting into CrossFit coaching? Because that's ultimately kind of how we met. So what led you to become a coach? So my brother was in some desperate need of some help. Not des- <laughs> I won't say desperate. He just needed some help because he was essentially him and his him and his buddy were just running the gym solo, and so they needed some time to sleep. Two gym owners both had full time j- full time jobs on top of that, and running a gym. So they're like, "Hey, you're pretty good with people. Why don't you come coach some classes?" And you're starting to kind of pick up on what this CrossFit deal is. I did not have a level one yet. Sorry, did not have a level one yet. But I knew how to teach an air squat pretty dang good. So I hopped in and would coach a lot of morning classes for free, free 99, so they could get some sleep. Okay. This which essentially <laughs> led me into that. And then you just found yourself enjoying it? Yeah. I enjoyed helping people and like when people get their first double under or their first PR or can see what they're actually capable of doing, I love seeing that light in someone's eye when they're like, holy shit, I can do this. Yeah. I mean, I think that's kind of why we all coach is finding fulfillment in watching others achieve things that they never thought was possible before. Um, But if you don't know Robert, he is pretty dang athletic and a good looking guy. At least I think so. But ultimately what led me to kind of feel connected to him and want to be in a relationship with him was not all that outside stuff, a lot more of the inside stuff and gooey gooey. (laughs) <laughs> and like I said, he's helped me a lot in my personal growth. I think something that people may not know about you is that when you went to college, what what were you studying? Psychology. Yeah. So, <laughs> and I think you practice a lot of um, self-growth as well. And like I said at the beginning of this, the one thing you're able to do extremely well, which I think I've said before is a little bit annoying, especially when we argue but I, ultimately, I do think it is a good trade and is a gift, as as you've said, is being able to see other people's perspectives, which is something that I think you need if you're going to try to live a life that is not as judgmental. Um, and the reason that judgment kind of came up this week, which actually was because of an event that took place a couple weeks ago with our close friend, Devin Ford. Um, So if you're listening, most of you are probably in the CrossFit world already and may have heard his name come up and maybe you heard his name with some, with not the greatest reputation, let's just say. 
let's just say that but he is a close friend of ours robert knows him a lot better than i do and i'll give him the reins here in just a second but there was a situation that happened with him when he was qualifying for the crossfit games actually this year it was this past open the 2019 open and um he received a lot of judgment for things that that took place and it really was just eye-opening i believe to not only the harsh judgment that was given, but how quick people are to judge before they even try to get some sort of understanding of the situation or the person or what the person may have been dealing with or going through. And so I just want to hand this over to Robert here, but this is basically why judgment came up this week and why I thought it was very important to talk about because I think that if we're able to try to see other perspectives, then ultimately we're able to be a little bit less judgmental and live a little bit more of a fulfilling life. So, Robert, let us know who is Devin Ford and kind of explain to us what happened with him. Thank you. Uh, Devin, 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 Devin. Devin Ford is a good friend of mine. My man. My man. (laughs) Devin Ford is a great friend of mine that I've kind of – he's been my nutritionist for the past almost year and a half now. Going to be two years, obviously, in 2020, but – He's been a competitive CrossFit athlete for about 10 years now and has been basically working through different ways through science, psychology, nutrition, different tests on himself, taking him through through the whole gears and system of everything just to figure out how to be the best athlete he can be because the genetic card he was dealt was god-awful. Like, Devin is horrible for genetics with sleep, um, gaining muscle, losing muscle, and he's basically figured out a way to hack his system through performance fuel and through fueling his body the right way to be the best athlete that he can be. And so for those of you that don't know, Performa fuel is his nutrition company that he works for. And I've also worked with as well. He's coached me in nutrition. Um, He lives in New York city. He also owns a gym. So he has lots going on. And as Robert kind of said, he has battled a lot to try to get to where he was, which was the point of, qualifying for the CrossFit Games. So I'm sorry to interrupt you, but go ahead. It's all good. Um, So, yeah, basically sums Devin up pretty quick there. But what basically happened in the Open, he did the workout, had a really, really dumb, dumb mistake, and it was kind of put on a giant platform. So essentially what he did was instead of finishing the 50 handstand push-ups, he did 40 And as you guys all know, being upside down for 40 consecutive handstand push-ups, you lack some oxygen. It gets very hard to think and breathe. Let alone strict handstand push-ups. Let alone strict handstand push-ups. Devin's an animal. Big shoulders. But so without even without even taking a second to over like think about it, he hits that 40th rep. He thinks he's at 50, and continues to work out and finishes it in eight something, seven something like top time in the world, whatever. Um, but so, well, that's not whatever. I mean, that's that's a pretty big deal. That's a a, okay. It's a pretty big deal. Um, so. He does that, sends the video, submits it, and then they send it back and are like, hey, you missed 10 reps. And Devin's like, no way, no fucking way, man. Like, I did not not miss 10 reps. I'm not like that would never happen. And And if you know Devin, his his voice and his New York accent, it would have been a lot more dramatic. It would have been a lot more dramatic. But so we got put on this giant platform and he... And he sent a second video because obviously he did the full workout with 50 handstand push-ups completed and it was only about like 17, 20 seconds slower or so. So not a huge gap, 17, 20 seconds. So CrossFit takes this all in con- into consideration, weighs the odds, and docks him a minute. And he still is qualifying for the cross- CrossFit Games. With that minute deduction, he's still beating Patrick Bellner. He's still beating Fikowski. He's still beating all those guys in the open to qualify for the Games. Now, when CrossFit put this out that they gave him a penalty, they posted the video, said he's getting a minute penalty, no context, nothing, just a video of him not essentially completing the workout, air quotes, doing 40 instead of 50, and the CrossFit world went nuts. They just, oh, go ahead. No, that's what I was going to, I was going to ask. So obviously it was up for debate as to some of the, standards of his movements being held and the fact that he did miss these 10 reps but he also had the video of a workout which was slower but he did complete all the reps and 
So the, the big point here was what happened. And I think you can speak a little bit more on this because you talked to him personally and kind of know how it affected his personal life and ultimately the decision he, he ended up making. But so what was kind of the backlash of that? What were people saying? What were the comments? Because, of course, social media kind of went crazy and took over with this. So what were some of the things that were said and what was that backlash? So essentially everyone went gunning for Devin Ford and they took out, they took something that CrossFit had made a decision on. They had all the evidence and decided that the best thing to do was dock him a minute, a minute 10, whatever it was, and still allow him to qualify. But everyone kind of, I feel, displaced their hate for the CrossFit games and put that straight to Devin Ford and he received death threats um, numerous comments about being a horrible person and you better decline that invite or this or that and just tons of pro games athletes just shitting on his life and not really not really even get, getting a chance to ask him like what happened just immediately assuming judging and jumping down his throat about all these things and you don't even know the guy you have no idea what this guy's been through you have no idea all you see is a time, a deduction, a, a sketchy video, I guess we'll say for now, and then no context, but he's still going to the games. Right, and ultimately, so obviously all these judgments, there were CrossFit Games athletes getting behind it. The To the extent to the point of a death threat, which I think is pretty darn extreme, um, what ultimately happened with him? What did he decide to do? So Devin actually ultimately just declined the invite. He said, not even worth it. All he really wanted to do was know that he can make it to the games, and he accomplished that. The invite was his to decline. Yes, there was lots of negativity around it, which is obviously not the best way you'd want to go to the games, but he ultimately decided he had accomplished what he wanted to, and it just wasn't even worth the burden at that point. Right, so ultimately this led him to, like you said, decline his invite. And it's hard to bring this up without asking the question of, like, would he have still made that decision if maybe there wasn't all this backlash and judgment going on? Because, like you said, now to him, it wasn't even worth it to go because it's not going to be an enjoyable experience for him. And so that's kind of what brought it to my attention of, like, wow, maybe without this judgment – this wouldn't have happened. And so I think it's important to note that we live in this judgmental society. So it's kind of like a natural thing for us now, whether people are judging the car we drive, the way we dress, the way we do our hair, it's extremely judgmental. But the reason we do it or why we are so judgmental is actually instinctual. So it's a natural thing as humans for us to be judgmental. We have evolved to survive. So when we see some sort of threat, as always, we go into this fight or flight mode. And when we're in this mode, we're unable to see the possible reasons for the behavior of others. Our first reaction is just to become defensive. Like if you see a bear coming towards you, you're not going to be like, hmm, where's that bear coming from? Like, let me just think of his perspective, <laughs> you know, like you're in that fight or flight mode. You're trying to make a defensive reaction. Like that's your first reaction right there. And there's actually a term for this in social psychology. It's called the FAE or fundamental attribution error, which describes the human tendency to overly att attribute the behavior of others to character traits. So for example, if you're cut off by someone in traffic, you're much more likely to attribute the other driver's behavior to his character as being selfish or a jerk. So like that guy's just an asshole rather than believing it's a situational error, such as that his wife is about to give birth and he's trying to get to the hospital as fast as he can. So this FAE or fundamental attribution error causes us to make snap judgments about someone's character without considering their circumstance. And I think this comes up a lot in our day-to-day -day lives as well. So when do you feel like, for you, that you see judgment the most? Or when do you feel like you're judgmental? Because it's impossible to come on here and say, yeah, stop judging people. 
who just explained that it's a natural human instinct. And I think we'd all be lying to say that, oh, like, I'm not judgmental. I don't ever judge people. Like, that's, you're never going to be able to fully eliminate that. But for you, when do you see judgment the most? And then when do you feel like, as a person, you find yourself most judgmental? Um, I think I typically see judgment the most at the gym just because I'm there the most, whether it be someone judging that someone RX'd when they shouldn't have or RX'd or scaled when they could have done RX or just typical things along those lines. But I guess the biggest thing I would want to dive into with that is the place I usually come when I come from judgment is when I'm at my worst, when I'm at my lowest point, when I have no more of my cup to pour into anybody else's cup, when I'm my lowest and I'm being super super hard on myself because we are our own biggest self-critic that is when i am most judgmental of others when i am struggling and then i see that in other people and i'm shitting on myself so then i start shitting on other people like why can't you do like why can't you do this why are you doing that and it's very very hard for me in those moments that i'm at my lowest to see anyone else's perspective because i can't even take care of myself in that moment yeah i mean i i do see judgment in the gym as well I think too, like as women, we judge each other a lot. And I think that comes mostly from our insecurities. So, you know, whether you're like looking the girl up and down, like the hot new chick that walks in, whether it's the store, the restaurant, wherever you're at, you're immediately trying to judge that person and kind of gauge like, are they better than me? Is she prettier than me? And for me, like, I know I still struggle with that sometimes because I still have my own insecurities around that. But I used to be a lot more judgmental than I am now. And like I said, I think you have helped me with that as far as trying to see other people's perspectives. Because I know for me, I look at everything as very black and white, right or wrong. And so when I see somebody doing something in my definition of the wrong way, I struggle with it because I'm like, well, there's obviously a right way to do it and they're not doing that (laughs) and so I have a hard time trying not to judge them in that moment but what I'm working on is trying to like we said see that perspective and you know for example like say you're driving and somebody is just driving super slow which if you don't know Robert he drives so darn slow and it drives me and it drives me insane But so instead of like trying to make a judgment about that, which I 100% used to, I try to remind myself now, like, there's no right or wrong way. Maybe that's just the way that he enjoys driving or maybe that's just the way that she likes to do her hair or whatever, like trying to come back and understand that it's not right or wrong. And that just because people do things differently than you do doesn't mean that we need to pass judgment or that that way is right or wrong. Agreed. I think <laughs> I think going back to that FAE thing, it's very, very, it's very, very easy for us to, in that moment, in the heat of the moment when we're passionate, to totally just judge the crap out of that person and say, you're an asshole because you just did that, but you don't know if they just had a giant fight with their wife or husband or significant other. You don't know if someone in the family recently died, passed away. We only think about that stuff for ourselves, but never someone else. We put everyone else in boxes and everything as i see life is not black and white everything is very very gray for me and some people don't like that which is okay so why okay let's get into that then like why you know you just said you live in the gray area you're very good at seeing other people's perspectives and trying to kind of keep the peace so why do you feel that you're so good at that or what do you think has happened or created an environment for you to be that way like why why are you so good at seeing other people's perspectives or why do you think was it a way that you were raised like explain a little bit (laughs) i think it goes back to definitely how i was being how i was raised my mom has a very very high emotional intelligence she's a very very smart individual she's a nurse she's very selfless cares for everyone but herself and i think growing up with a single mother and seeing that just made me believe that's how you should treat everyone. Like everyone is almost, I don't want to say above you, but like everyone should be taken care of before yourself. I think that's the biggest thing that I've taken from my mom and 
probably a hundred percent, ninety nine percent of the w- reason I am the way I am is because of my mom. So, is there anything that kind of, <clears throat> when you're struggling with judging or when you are trying to keep that peace, is there anything that like you say to yourself or go through in your head maybe that kind of helps you with that? Yeah. So I think a a good one is one from Carl Paoli. We've actually done a seminar with him. His biggest thing with struggling with something like that is always assuming positive intent. Always assume someone's doing the best they can because realistically they are. Everyone only, it's so cliche, but you only know what you know and you only have the tools that you have. You're all, everyone's dealt a certain deck of cards and we're doing our best every day with that deck. Yeah, I like that. And I mean, you don't know like the background story. Like, like I mentioned earlier, maybe that guy that's speeding and driving like an asshole is trying to get his wife to the hospital so she can give birth to their first child that they struggled so hard to become pregnant with in the first place. Like, try to get a little bit of an understanding of the story behind it before you make those quick judgments. Because I actually found this quote. It's from a woman named Tara Brock. She's a psychologist and meditation teacher. And her quote was, judging someone does not define who they are. It defines who you are. And I think that's really important to bring up because most of the time in the way that we're judging others or, excuse me, making assumptions about others, keep in mind, like, the fact that you're being judgmental to those people usually means that you're also very judgmental or critical of yourself and I know I've found that extremely true for me like I actually judge myself a lot harder than I believe I judge others but I know I think you you had some information on that as well uh just like you said before it just comes back to perspective and whatever we see we kind of project that onto other people kind of like the cliche thing once again it takes one to know one so whatever you typically see in yourself you're going to find all those things within other people right so i mean like what does this look like usually when you're judging other people is it can manifest in you know avoiding that person making fun of them seeing them seeing their behavior as like attention seeking or really just holding negative thoughts or feeling towards them i think a lot of us usually we can kind of get away from like actually using the language that hurts their feelings and like actually making fun of them um but a lot of the times i think it's mostly just holding negative thoughts and feelings towards them which if you think about it as we've said before like holding those thoughts and feelings within yourself really only hurts you because that per like if you and I are arguing like and I'm just thinking like God Robert's just a freaking asshole like he's so annoying I whatever that's only hurting me because I'm holding that within myself like you don't actually know that I'm having those negative feelings and thoughts towards you unless I do actually you know verbalize it but it's really only hurting me. Resentment is like drinking a glass of poison and expecting that other person to get sick. Right, <laughs> you free, love that one. Free gem. <laughs> but like we said, so judging others like and that usually manifests into judging yourself which becomes you know feelings of shame guilt low self-esteem and i think all this judgment causes us to live a life that is based on what other people think of us which is kind of bullshit then because you're not living the life that you want to live i actually just heard is kind of silly i guess but this story on the radio the other day and it was about this woman who was in a relationship that was abusive so it was her and her boyfriend she had a daughter and the boyfriend was very abusive to her but was and they they were separated but he was still living there yada yada and she was trying to get advice as to how to get out of the situation and literally what she said on the radio was like yeah, I know, like, I should probably kick him out, and I should probably not be really worrying about his feelings, and I should worry about my own. So she essentially knew all the right things to do, but she literally said, I guess I'm just afraid of what other people are going to say. And that really stuck out to me, because it's like, wow, she's making this whole huge decision for her life to stay in an abusive relationship, 
which is obviously unhealthy for not only her, but now her daughter who's going to grow up in this situation. And she's making that decision based on the fact of how other people are going to judge her or, as she said, what other people are going to say. And so obviously that's one of the big consequences of living in this judgmental society or living a judgmental life. I think it also kills our creativity and kind of just causes us to follow societal trends, whether that's something as small as like, oh, like this is what's in fashion right now or bigger things as like, I need to have that big house or that fancy car or whatever it may be. You end up spending money then, not only money, but also time trying to fit the ideals of other people. So obviously being judgmental is something we want to avoid. So <laughs> now we need to figure out steps that we can take to try to work on this because as we said like it's pretty impossible to just never judge another person again we stated already it's a natural instinct for us as humans but there are a lot of steps that we can take and things that we can start practicing in our lives to kind of help us out with this so I actually have some step or 10 little steps here that I found on psychology today there was an article it was by that same psychologist um, who said that judging someone does not define who they are it defines who you are and so some of these 10 steps come from that as well and I know Robert you also have some things to add later on but feel free to hop in on any of this as well um, the first one I have as far as some steps would be don't blame yourself so we already talked about that it's a normal reaction um, but just try to pause before you act out of that fight or flight mode. So like take that second to pause and kind of think about where that other person may be coming from. Step two kind of goes right along with that. It is be mindful. So try to catch yourself before you speak. Try to understand where the other person's coming from and rephrase that critical internal thought into a positive one. And this next one is actually kind of one that I think goes along with the book that you read, Robert, about ego, but it is depersonalize. <clears throat> so Will Smith actually has a quote that says, never underestimate the pain of a person because in all honesty, everyone is struggling. Some people are better at hiding it than others. And I know you read, what was the ego book? Ego is the enemy. Right, and what was kind of the takeaway from that one? Um, basically, just to have your ego there, but put it aside in those moments, like you're saying, of judging other people because you don't know what everyone else is going through. Yeah, and there's a quote there that from that book where it was like, it's not about you and it's all your fault kind of thing. So kind of depersonalizing it and taking it away and knowing that we're all humans, we're all here together, we're all the same. And we all have struggles. Like, don't ever think that someone isn't going through anything because you really don't know the true story behind them. And that kind of goes with the next step as well. Like, look for basic goodness. So try to find something good about the other person instead of just focusing on the negative, which is essentially what our brains are hardwired to do. So try to find something good about that person. Like, even as hard as it may be in that moment, like, even if they're really taking you off, like, find something good. Always try to shift that to the positive instead of the negative. I also like to repeat the mantra, just like me. So, again, remembering we're all human, we're all the same. That person is suffering and makes mistakes just like you do. So, repeating that mantra, like, just like me in my head kind of helps of like, okay, that person's still a human. They're still going through things. It doesn't make me better than them. Because as you said, I think the ego is one thing that really kind of gets in the way. And so moving right along, the next couple steps <laughs> would be reframe. So when someone's doing something that you don't like, maybe perhaps think, hey, they just have a different way of doing things. Like I already said, the driving example of, of like Robert just really likes to drive super slow. <laughs> that doesn't mean it's wrong. It's just the way that he likes to do it. Last couple steps here, make sure you reflect inwards. So we tend to judge others harshly on things that we do ourselves, which 
<clears throat> will come about a little bit more later, but we're all just doing the best that we can. Try to separate the person from the act. So separating the problematic acts from the person or for example, like judge the sin, not the sinner. So even though they're making that mistake and doing that thing that you may not like or that you may view as wrong, try to separate it from the person. It's not a bad, that doesn't make that person bad. Maybe you don't have to agree with the thing that they're doing, but separate the person from the act. It's not the same thing and try not to tie those things together. And the last thing I have here, which is actually a little bit from Brene Brown, as always, I love all her stuff, but feel good about you first. So Brene says, if I feel good about my parenting, I have no interest in judging other people's choices. If I feel good about my body, I don't go around making fun of other people's weight or appearance. We're hard on each other because we're using each other as a launching pad out of our own perceived deficiency. I think the biggest thing with that, to piggyback off of that, is the biggest form of self-love is self-expression. So things we're typically hardwired for is that instead of being yourself, you choose being a part of something as opposed to being yourself. So we go into this this mindset of, uh, I'm not gonna, I'd rather you know the truth than like me, which is a better way to go about it than I'd rather you I'd rather sugarcoat this for you than you actually know the real me so we can still be friends and hang out and do stuff together. Yeah, so essentially people do things in order to have belonging than do things that they may enjoy. Yeah, people will choose community over being themselves any day of the week. Not to generalize, but most. <laughs> <laughs> totally generalize there. So to kind of wrap this up here, we talked about the fact that judgment causes us to live a life based on what others think of us, kills our creativity, causes us to spend money, time, just trying to fit ideals of others or follow these societal trends. But remember that the judgments you use to describe others are often the judgments that you use on yourself as well. And we know this is a natural thing. It's an instinctual thing as humans. There's a, even a term for it called fundamental attribution error. But there are many steps we can take. We went over those. Um, but I think, again, just kind of as a closing thought, realizing that the negative thoughts and feelings you're holding towards others really only hurt you and not the person that you're holding resentment towards is a big one because it's, it's only hurting you. It's not going to make any difference towards them they don't even know half the time so just kind of checking yourself there and reminding yourself of how judgment makes you feel as a person and that there's a difference between judgments and being a judgmental person so it's not to say that you're ever going to stop making judgments about people that's probably not going to happen that's unrealistic but it's okay to make judgments it's okay to have opinions and feelings towards things but we want to try to avoid being a judgmental person and try to work on seeing the perspective of others. Um, so just to kind of close it off, is there anything else that you want to add, Robert, or that maybe you want to share about kind of your self-growth practice that really helps you continue to see these perspectives of others? Um, I think the biggest thing is just remembering all those things and just remembering to assume positive intent within everyday life yeah i think i think that really is a good one okay well thank you robert for joining us again i'm sure he'll be on more where we can kind of dig his brain a little bit further but the reason i wanted him on in this one was because he's really helped me try to work on that and trying to see other people's perspectives and focus on that positive intent and where people are coming from so thank you robert for joining us <laughs> and i'm sure he'll definitely be back um if you guys have any other topics you'd like to hear about or maybe things you struggle Thanks with with judgment or have any other tips yourself or things you'd like to share as always feel free to comment below like subscribe all that fun stuff and we will be back next week thank you